Hello, everybody. Hello, good evening. Good evening. So uh, let us start with uh, questions as usually. And uh, all the questions today. Six questions, right? The number one. He was not aware of anything, even an object. I wonder how is his mind working that time? This is a follow up question that he asked. You have addressed in last class. When a patient is in a surgery, he is injected chloroform and know nothing during the surgical section. Do he has conscious consciousness at time? Yes, he has. Now you are studying. Uh, so you should know. He does not have the six consciousness maybe if uh, he is in a deep coma but he definitely has the alaya consciousness otherwise he won't be able to get up impossible unless he has the alaya consciousness alaya consciousness is the consciousness with which we die and with with which we are reborn and if you believe in the antarabhava now it is a consciousness which exists in the in between in the bardo so this consciousness must be there otherwise nothing can be there nothing does not necessarily mean nothing as a negation what is actually there, you have to find out. So that is the first question. Therefore, the Yogacharins teach that the pure object in the five aggregates uh, is the uh, highest truth. Yes, this is the Sandi Nirmochana Sutra, the Tiesha meeting. There must be attachment. But why there is pure object in the five aggregates? The pure object is the object you cannot, you, you don't grasp. That becomes a pure object. The, this is called in Sanskrit, Sashrava is impure because there is inflow and outflow of impurities from the mind. If it is a pure object, like when you become an Arahat, when you become a Buddha, there is no inflow, uh, outflow of impurities from inside, outside. So the five aggregates, this is the, our world, we have no other world, then become a pure object. Now it is not a pure object because you are attached because you are attached, you have a self. Because you have a self, you have inflow and outflow of impurities. Hmm? The Buddhism is very simple. So please study. Would you explain the five realities? Mental factors form not linked to the mind it is not called form it is called the formations hmm? don't uh, confuse formations and the form hmm? <coughs> form means uh, rupa hmm? sa formations means shing hmm? yin in old translations so they are very very it's, quite a different meaning. So please make sure you don't confuse the two together. This is the most basic Buddhism one should be aware of. Otherwise, 
this uh, a little bit uh, deep teachings like uh, the waste, uh, the mind only uh, doesn't don't make any sense. So first, usually one has to learn these most basic concepts of reason. Then uh, one can apply them to the consciousness only. So these uh, five realities or aggregates are our world. We are living in this world and there is no other world. Hmm? Now in the <clears throat> Northern Buddhism, in order to understand Buddhism, you need certain terms like impermanence, duration, cessation. Hmm? They are neither form, nor the mind, nor mental factors, eh? nor nirvana. So how to qualify them? Hmm? In the Southern Buddhism, they put them under the rupa form. Hmm? Space is also form in Southern Buddhism. While in Northern Buddhism, it is the non-created Wu Wei. Huh? So there are different categories, depend on the tradition. Huh? This category of uh, formations not linked to the mind is the peculiarity of the Northern tradition. And uh, in them, you will find such uh, important terms like uh, Minkan, huh? the life faculty, like impermanence. So in order to explain Buddhism, we need these terms. If we don't use these terms, we cannot explain Buddhism. But they are uh, neither the rupa, sir, nor they belong to the sensation, nor they belong to the perception, nor they belong to will and will formations nor do they belong to consciousness or so where to put them. The Northern Buddhism puts them under mega forms not linked to the mind. Hmm? Not forms, but formations. Xin, Wu Xiang, Xin, Xin. So this is peculiarity of the Northern Buddhism. And uh, in this uh, depends on the tradition in Sarvastivada different, in Yogacara different. In Sarvastivada these uh, are considered to be real. In Yogacara they deny their existence. They have no real existence in Yogacara. The Sautrantika hmm, has reduced their number and the Yogacara has even added to them several other dharmas because they are not real anyway. So whatever can be useful to explain the dharma, you, you can put it under this Shin Wu Xiang Yin Shin. Formations not linked to the mind. So this is the second question. Third lecture two. I don't understand this theory just like the Theravada and Sarvastivada Abhidhamma emphasizing a thorough understanding of the real selfless objects of experience to attain the ultimate realization, which for the Yogacara is the self-nature of the mind. Hmm? Uh, thus, the ultimate, the pure object in the five aggregate, which is beyond the language, is realized through penetrating the illusionary self-nature of all that is conditioned by names. In this course, we shall be concerned with this concept. How does this happen? 
<laughs> how this happened? You are now in the sixth lecture. <laughs> so what have you been doing? Uh, it happens by analyzing, hmm? first of all, the our experience, which is based on mind, <clears throat> and secondly, by logic and by scriptures. Hmm? Please uh, study Cheng Wei Shudun. Hmm? They explain very clearly the uh, Yoga Chara is based on scriptures, on logic, and on experience. Uh, according to the Yogacharins, without the uh, alaya consciousness, you cannot explain any important Buddhist concept. Most important, you cannot explain the process of dying and rebirth. You cannot explain the process of the... Uh, state of neither perception nor the samadhi of neither perception nor feeling social hmm? meeting all these things you cannot explain how consciousness <laughs> how consciousness gives rise to uh, the Nama Rupa and how Nama Rupa means and how means gives rise to consciousness. Hmm? You cannot explain the uh, consciousness being the Ahara, being the Sh, hmm? being the food on which we are dependent and so on. Hmm? You cannot explain the consciousness being the seed hmm? and so on. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so please kindly study a little bit the uh, uh, if you don't have time to study Cheng Wei Shulun, uh, which is quite long, please at least study the uh, Tie Shen meeting. Hmm? I have already advised you to do so. Hmm? As far as uh, the some asked about the assessment, so if you have no time to read anything, read at least the uh, Tieshen meeting, which is the base for understanding the Yoga Chara approach to the uh, analyzing of Buddhism. Hmm? Especially the sixth chapter, because we are, Yoga Chara has many, many aspects, we, we cannot treat all of them, we are only treating the soteriological aspect, the aspect related to the process of liberating the mind. And this is the most important process, uh, most important contribution of Yoga Chana to Buddhism. Uh, nowadays, the Northern Buddhism, however you, whatever your philosophy may be, you explain the process of meditation based on the Yoga Chara. Would you explain Pien Chi Zhe and how the Bodhisattva's knowledge based on imposition of self-existence? This is a big confusion. The Bodhisattva <laughs> knowledge is not uh, based on the imposition of self-existence, the Bodhisattva knowledge is based on penetrating the unreality of self-existence in the phenomena. And this idea of self-existence in the phenomena, we believe things to be lasting, we believe the persons to be lasting, because we impose the idea of self, hmm? because we impose the idea of selves on the persons and on the phenomena, therefore we do not see that we are and the, the world is just a process. Process is impermanence, process is uh, causes and conditions appearing and disappearing moment by moment. 
if you understand Buddhism, this should be very clear. Because we do not see it, we are grasping. Because we are grasping, we are suffering. Because we suffer, so the Buddha teaches us Dharma. And this Dharma is very useful to let go grasping. The grasping is the source of all suffering. So please accord, give it a thought. And this, from the Yogacara perspective, happens due to Pien Chijra. So first, our reality is dependent origination, Yitachi. But we interpret it through the eyes of the Pien Chijra. The scriptures explain this Pien Chijra is like a, a diseased eye. We see the reality through our diseased eye. So, diseased eye sees two moons. Hmm? We are always seeing two moons in the daily life. But we don't think we are seeing two moons. We are convinced what we see is real. But actually we are seeing two moons because we impose the notion of self-reality on persons and on things. Hmm? And how do we impose it? And all Buddhists agree through concepts. What we cling to is not reality because we don't understand reality. Only Buddha understands the reality. What we cling to is our concept. This is the object of our attachments, not the reality. If you understand the reality, you will not be attached. Now you are attached because you see it through the filter of your concepts. These concepts are based on names, on sentences, Hmm? on uh, syllables, on the idea of uh, real, uh, specific and common characteristics of the objects which are lasting. Hmm? And uh, due to this, we impose the idea of something existing by itself. It is through these names, syllables, we use names to communicate animals and so on. They use syllables, but they are working on the same level. They see, their, you see reality according to your concepts, which are based on your previous experience, previous clinging to your experience, previous feelings to which you have clung. And the animals which we treat like uh, if they did not have mind, hmm? but animals have exactly maybe more developed feelings that we have. They have also love, compassion, hmm? but we treat them like uh, if they were uh, without love, without compassion, because we don't see that their reality is also same like our reality based on through the filter of their concepts. So when you see a, a thousand a yuan, you react uh, different than when you see a, a 10 yuan, but it's just a piece of paper, this color, hmm? nothing else. And when a dog sees it, he will maybe uh, see a similar color. It's not granted at all that he sees the same color. He will also touch it. He will see the smoothness. Hmm? He will see some hardness there. Hmm? He will see some shape there. Hmm? But he may then... Uh, pass urine on it, and when he sees a bone with blood, he will be very happy, but you will be disgusted. Hmm? 
because his concepts are different. So he sees the reality through different concepts, therefore he's different. So same for beings. We also see reality because we have common karma, we are human beings, so we see reality a little similar, but very, very different way. You are attached to different things. Everybody is attached to different things because his concepts are different. These concepts create the idea of self-existence, which is based on names. As soon as we see, perceive an object, we already apply previous experience to it by giving it a name. Okay. So, what we do is instead of seeing reality, we either add something to reality which is not there, or we want to uh, take away something from reality which is there. So this is due to our imposition of self-existence. Please study more. Would you give detail about Zhuan uh, Shi Chengzhi? Uh, now we are studying just that. You, this is a very long process. I am teaching you step by step so that you can realize. So now we are uh, in the stage of learning the importance of the attention, the key to wisdom is the attention because we are starting the cognition process starts with attention and with this attention we already apply now you are learning that and I am explaining that you are already applying your past experience So you are programmed like a computer by your past experience. Now, when you penetrate this, then you can change your active consciousness into wisdom so that you won't find in your experience any object worth of clinging. This is what Buddha is saying. Nothing else. Sabbe Dhamma Na Alam Abhinivesaya. There is not a single phenomena in our experience which is worth of clinging. Why? Because all the phenomena of our experience are in the flow of impermanence. In our worldly experience. And our worldly experience is based on attention. When you attend to the object, you can differentiate it. When you differentiate it, you already differentiate on the base of your past experience. Would you give details about the relationship among six consciousnesses, manas and alaya? Can we eliminate manas and alaya? If yes, how? <laughs> Why are you running forward? I am teaching you step by step. You cannot explain in one word. <laughs> of course, when you, when alaya turns to the wisdom of the uh, universe, the mirror, then all the consciousness become wisdom. But because the alaya is the product of our past clinging, therefore it is not connected with the wisdom of the 
universe and mirror. So we cling, because we cling, our consciousness is dwelling. Because our consciousness is dwelling, we are subjected to the process of rebirth. When the consciousness does not dwell, finds no place to dwell, you are a Buddha. So it becomes completely at least. It becomes so completely clear and sees this first question, sees the purity of in the five aggregates. This is our world, no other world we came from, no other world we going to. We were five aggregates, we are five aggregates, and we will be five aggregates as long as the causes and conditions for the five aggregates are there. And five aggregates are based in the alaya consciousness. So all that we experience is this alaya consciousness, which is the base of everything we experience in the world. It is the cause and effect. Please study the... If you have time, Chen Wei Shirun, the f first, second, third verses hmm? explain very clearly. Okay, any more questions? Uh, dear Venerable, is there any difference? between the direct object and pure object. It, could you please elaborate further? Well, I am explaining that precisely hmm, in this uh, two days lesson, and uh, I explained it before. Hmm, the direct object is not a pure object. Direct object is the object which is the uh, nimitta bhaga xiang fen of the alaya. Hmm? This is a direct object. And alaya is the place which appropriate our faculties through which we understand the world, through which we experience the world. It appropriates our faculties and appropriates what we see through the experience through the faculties. So the pure direct object is not a pure object. But by understanding direct object, you can understand the key how to get to the pure object. So to understand the direct object is very important. Why? Because the direct object does not go through the filter of the uh, mental consciousness, which is based in the manas. It is its base, which brings the self into our experience. And the alaya is conditioned by the manas, and manas is again conditioned by the alaya. Hmm? Very important to understand. So this is how we function in the world as individuals. Now, when you study dharma, you reverse the object. You break the impure seeds from the alaya, and by planting the pure seeds into it, you will realize the selfless nature of your experience. Then you can turn the clinging consciousness into wisdom. So the direct object is not a pure object, but it is the key for understanding the pure object. Why? Because what you see is through the eyes directly 
So please try to experience in meditation. If you don't pay attention to it, if you don't analyze it, if you just see, then you are not really conscious of the inside and the outside. And this is very important for understanding the theory of the mind only. In the alaya itself starts the process of differentiating between inner and out outer, but it is not yet real inner and outer because it all happens in the mind. So when the, in alaya they are I have explained before, there are three aspects in the alaya. The self-witnessing aspect, hmm? Xiang. The self-witnessing aspect is the karmic consciousness. Due to the karmic consciousness, this Tian Fen, hmm? the perceiver is activated and when the perceiver is activated then there is what is perceived and when there is what is perceived it is perceived already through the in uh, our state of not being a Buddha it is perceived already through the filter of the manas which have the uh, delusion of the self. Hmm? So please study more, hmm? get some better understanding. Okay. Mayo and Hayo. Dear Venerable, uh, why uh -huh. breath? Jenny, okay. Why breath is also is also why breath is concept. Hmm? Now, today you are going to study. Hmm? The real breath appears and disappears moment by moment. It does not last. The breath that you experience as a long breath or short breath is a concept of the breath. Now you have already studied Tung Fen, hmm? which is similar to the breath that you have directly experienced through the Shui Er Shi. Hmm? To, today we will study. Hmm? But it is already a concept because it's Shui Er Shi is connected with the past object. Hmm? So after Shui Er Shi, you then have the investigating consciousness, the deciding consciousness, and the going through the object, long breaths, short breaths, Pleasant breath, unpleasant breath, like it, don't like it, want it, don't want it. Hmm? So you get embroiled into the endless net, spider net of Shilun. Hmm? And Shilun is, the Shilun Sichi is the base for Alaya. Hmm? This is very important to understand. Our alaya is based on this spider net of shilun net of our extension of perception due to desire, due to clinging. So please try to be clear about it and see it in meditation in what is your spider net, how you cling to the breath. According to the Sunyan Chu Jing, the Anapana meditation is 
the breath is the kuti, the truth of suffering. Through breath you understand how attached you are. Try to close your nose and your mouth. <laughs> you will see very clearly that if the breath is kuti or not kuti. Our existence is based in attachment. And uh, it is very clear on studying the breath. Okay, another question? So how to understand the direct object to reach the pure object? Well, we have explained it you should, uh, when you are connected with a direct object, then you have no clear distinction of the inside and the outside. And the nature of consciousness is non-dual. The dualism comes from the alaya, the aspect of karmic consciousness, self witnessing is already connected with activating consciousness and seeing consciousness as we said what is seen as something real something to be grasped so this uh, urge is being created in your alaya by your uh, previous seeds based on clinging, based on shilun. Please contemplate it and try to get clear on it so that you can advance in your meditation. I am teaching you yoga chara in order to enable you to study the real dharma. And the real dharma is very simple, but we are unable to digest the simple so we need a very very clear concept yoga chara is the uh, master of clear concepts okay venerable i could you explain more about the relation between emptiness and alaya? You have mentioned middle paths of the only mind. The middle path means the uh, only way to realize the peace of mind. This is a middle path. It is a path deprived of the all extremes including the extreme of real existence and the real non-existence, extreme of lasting cause and lasting effect, extreme of uh, uh, either attaining something by uh, indulgence or by extreme uh, austerities. All extremes in our life are due to not understanding the middle path. In order to understand the middle path, you have to have uh, shamatha and vipassana, jirkwan. If you have jirkwan, then you can see the middle path because the middle path is something can only happen on an object you cannot grasp. And that object in Buddhism is called emptiness, signlessness, and desirelessness. Kung, Wu Xiang, Wu Yuan. That is the real object of the middle path. On that object, there cannot be extremes. So the mind can find the complete appeasement. 
Now, it does not mean that that object clash with what we experience in daily life. That object is the five aggregates. When you have penetrated in terms of the Kung, Wu Xiang, Wu Yan, now you are a Buddha. If you are a Bodhisattva, you have penetrated, but you don't enter Nirvana because you have the Yuan, Zhong Sheng Wu Pian Xuan Tu, Fan Wu Jin Xuan Tu, Fan and so on. If you have not penetrated, you are neither Bodhisattva nor <laughs> any Buddha. You are nothing. So you are just uh, completely merged in your little world. So we study Buddhism to find that there is something beyond our little world, which is beyond our little differentiation, but which compasses all the differentiation. And we live because of differentiations. Arahat still has to eat, Buddha still has to eat. Arahat still has to rest. They still live in the five aggregates, but they have penetrated their nature of not grasping. This grasping comes from mind, from the mind which clings. The mind which clings is the cause of existence. Now, if you want to be a bodhisattva, you have to master this mind which clings by letting it not cling to the self, but to cling to the beings, to help beings. When you have succeeded in purifying it completely, you can become the perfect Buddha. If you hurry to Nirvana, you can become an Arahant. Okay, any more questions? Neola. Neola. Hmm? So, uh, I see that some of you have not much base in Buddhism. Hmm? So, please try to see that uh, all this yoga chara is based just on a revaluation of the traditional Buddhism. So try also at least a little bit to have some idea what about the Chishalun Abhidharma, hmm? about some basic concepts of Buddhism. Otherwise, the Yogacara becomes very difficult. Now we have ended with what uh, We have ended with what uh, I think the four attentions. Hmm? Forceful attention, attention with gaps in application, attention without gaps, and attention with an effortless application. Hmm? So this attention with an effortless application is attention that you use when you are in Samadhi and have mastered Samadhi, but it is also the attention that you use when you have mastered wisdom. You don't need any effort to in your attention because you are not holding to the object. So you naturally, your mind naturally flows on the object effortlessly. This is what you want to achieve by this training. 
now you want to you apply forceful attention because you want to grasp the object you want to grasp the object because you are not familiar with it hmm? so due to familiarity with the object which comes from developing mindfulness because you can remember the object therefore you can keep it in the mind hmm? so your attention to the object will become smoother and smoother hmm? when attention to the object becomes smoother then the uh, awareness can reduce and finally eliminate the defilement So this is the process of shamatha. But as long as you have not realized the ultimate object, the object of the middle path, then this uh, elimination of the defilements will be only temporary. As long as you are in the state of attention with effortless application in that attention no more defilements hmm? because that attention applies mind to the object equally all the virtues of the mind they become balanced so no place for defilements hmm? the one pointedness is balanced by wisdom by faith which is resolution by effort and by a perfect continuity in the mindfulness hmm? so no place for defilements as long as you are in this conditioning when you leave this conditioning bye bye <laughs> pure mind hmm? still you will have attachments which will be manifested by forceful attention not the balanced attention so you will have to use your meditation experience to practice mindfulness in daily life when there is mindfulness the mind becomes smoother when there is no mindfulness it is like a wild horse hmm? and when the habit of mindfulness is there the habit of awareness which removes defilements as soon as they arise will become your nature then being in samadhi is like being being at home in this conditioning when you study vipassana you can attain a very very fast realization so when the buddha was alive the study of shamatha was the part of the education they had to remember the vedas the scriptures so they practice concentration it was part of the education so because they had this base when the buddha taught them during the buddha's this course they became enlightened how is it possible because their mind and the meaning of that what the buddha was saying became one now anyone can teach you <laughs> that everything you experience is impermanent nothing to grasp you can hear it thousands of time but you will not be enlightened because you don't experience it with a uh, samadhi mind with uh, attention with an effortless application mm -hmm. you are not prepared to receive this teaching so that's why you practice attention with an effortless application 
for the worldly objects like the breath, which is based on the practice of attaining samadhi. When you have attained samadhi, mastered samadhi, then you can anytime without any effort again enter into samadhi because it becomes part of you. The samadhi, dhyana is a very powerful karma. Just like on a site of negative karma when you kill your mother or father or any person, you can never forget it in this life and in next life also. But same if you have attained the samadhi, it has made a very deep trace in your mind. You will not forget it in this life. And in the next life, if you continue practice, it will come to you naturally. I myself experience such cases while in my little experience of teaching samadhi, teaching jhana in Burma, I've experienced 19 years old Samanera from Kachin State, Chinese origin. Just explained to him the meditation on breath and he, within one week, he attained the fourth jhana. But he lives in a very different condition that we uh, live in Hong Kong or in Czech Republic or in Germany. <laughs> he lives in a small village in the Himalayas. When he has a bullock cart, his family, he thinks they are the happiest and richest people in the world. <laughs> so very different from our habits. So the first thing Ji Shirun explains to learn this effortless application is to reduce our desires and to be satisfied with little. Then we can learn step by step to abandon forceful attention and to practice mindfulness naturally. Then the defilements will not stay. The difference between the person who is trained, the defilements do not stay. The person who is not trained and who always reacts with forceful attention, his defilements will stay. And he will either be very, very happy or very, very miserable hmm? from one extreme to another. So no peace in mind. And then there is attention with an effortless application based on wisdom. And this is the super mundane path. Based on the middle way. For the disciples it is by contemplating the four noble truths. We will talk about it. So then we have the other four attentions to be applied in learning meditation. So attention to enter into meditation, unable to remove defilements. Now, in order to understand it clearly, we have to study the seven kinds of attention to be mastered to accomplish the mundane and supramundane. But we have already studied the nine Shinju, hmm? the nine Chitta Stitis, the nine abodes of mind in Shamatha. So the uh, first four attentions will not be able to remove really defilements deeply. 
to some extent, yes, with the force attention, because the mindfulness has ripened. Your mind will be start to be more aware because it does not lose the object of your attention. But it still will not be connected with a clear object. The shamatha and vipassana can only happen with a clear object. It cannot happen with a non-clear object. And clear object only happens when you have completely abandoned gross tendency of mind to thinking and gross tendency of mind to excitement. The gross tendency of mind to excitement has been already completely abandoned in the fourth stage, hmm? Jinju. But the gross tendency to thinking is abandoned in the fifth stage. So in the sixth stage, you become appeased. So you can say the uh, uh, attention to enter into meditation, unable to remove defilements, It, it is the attention which sees the thoughts of the defilements, but yet is not unable to, uh, to remove them because the awareness which removes the defilements has not yet ripened. It can only ripen when the mindfulness is ripened. When the mindfulness is ripened, because mindful function of mindfulness is concentrated attention and you have not yet habit of concentration so the mind will still have tendency to thinking because it has tendency to thinking the meditation object will not be clear hmm? not clear enough that the awareness can be very very conscious of this tendency of the mind to excitement and thinking hmm? only when they are reduced to minimum, then awareness can eventually learn to practice the step-by-step -step effortless attention. So we can come back to it when we speak about the seven kinds of attention. Hmm? Uh, here in the seven uh, kinds of attention, this uh, attention uh, this anulomika sui shun attention is uh, the uh, liao xiang liao xiang zui this Liao Xiang Zui still can be connected with a forceful attention. But when the mindfulness starts become clear, then you can take a resolution to stay with the object. And due to the resolution, then your, your mindfulness will have continuity. Attention capable to reduce and remove defilements. So this attention starts when you have determination
and due to this determination, your mindfulness has ripened. Because the mindfulness has ripened, you can get into the process of removing the defilements. Tiao Fu. Hmm? But this process of removing defilements also has stages and they are best explained by the seven kinds of attention. Then attention to uplift the mind. So the attention to uplift the mind you need when your mind is, uh, has no enthusiasm for meditation, hmm? when you get depressed because you don't achieve what you want to achieve, hmm? if you don't have this kind of attention that gladdens the mind, then you will give rise to uh, uh, despair hmm? uh, I am, have jumped over we are talking about attention capable to reduce and remove defilements so the next one is attention to uplift the mind hmm? I have jumped over to the uh, that gives uh, attention that gladdens the mind hmm? Actually, they are connected. That's why it's easy to jump for one to the other. So the attention that uplift the mind is Shun Chin Chin Zui, is the attention which brings the mind to a pure object. Especially when you are practicing on the non-beautiful object hmm? then you may get depressed there is a story that Buddha has taught the meditation on the impurities and many bhikkhus have committed suicide so he taught them anapana hmm? but actually the best meditation to Uplift the mind is to meditate on Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Sila, hmm? on the Tien, on the Upasama, on the appeasement. Hmm? These are the beautiful objects. Or in the Buddhist tradition, we meditate on the colors. Hmm? Color casinas, pienchu, hmm? very beautiful object. You can use a, a red flower or white flower hmm? to meditate on, fix your mind on it, hmm? and your mind will become immediately uplifted by a beautiful object. This is a skillful means. Hmm? So Remember, the Buddha has never taught just one method. He has taught many, many methods according to the situation. Nothing is fixed except in our mind. So Buddha always taught according to the circumstances and according to the persons who listen. He never taught only this is true, nothing else is true. This is just attachment. So he taught for those who were dominated by attachment, he taught the non-beautiful object for those who were depressed he taught the beautiful object important is they get a the concentration when they get a the concentration their mind goes inside the body when the mind goes inside the body 
then wisdom can be cultivated. If the mind is outside, no Buddhist wisdom will be there. So whatever we experience, we first have to gather the mind inside the body. Then when you advance, the body and the mind will come together. When the mind and the body come together, you can practice meditation. Then you can get appeasement on shamatha, vipassana, both. Attention to investigate the defilement that still remain in mind. So from time to time you have to see very clearly, especially in the shamatha meditation, you will get very high. But you will not have realized that the <laughs> defilements are still there. Because we don't have experience of the really balanced mind which only happens in a state of mind. Hmm. So these uh, four attention that gradually lead to the joy of Samadhi, they are connected. Uh, they are connected with what has been taught previously. This Three first ones are the sui shun sui. Attention to enter into meditation, yet unable to remove defilements. So they explain better this sui shun sui. So you will have to use them a lot during your progress in meditation so that you can get deep into the joy of meditation. The cultivation of attention that shakes, shatters the mind. In Chinese, they translate it as Tiao Lian Xin, Santapana. It is based on Samvega. This is a very important word in yoga. You have to shake yourself so that you put effort. If you don't shake yourself, you will never get any enlightenment, not to speak about the genuine realization, which means the end of defilement. So, you have to be disenchanted from the thoughts of the samsaric mind, which we experience always in daily life. Always we find some objects we pay forceful attention to, run, mind runs to these objects. You see a beautiful object and you your mind stick to it like a, a, uh, there is a song in Chinese, Lu Lao Shu Ai Ta Mi. Have you heard this song? Wo Ai Ni Lu Lao Shu Ai Ta Mi. So this is uh, the case. Our attention sees a beautiful object, the car, uh, money, a beautiful girl, beautiful man, rich man and so on, then your attention cling to it like Lao Shu Ai So uh, with this kind of attention, you will not get anywhere. And the first thing to see it harmful. So it shakes you. I am still subjected so much to suffering because I have this kind of uncontrolled attention. So when you see a frightful object, 
you uh, become frightened for a whole day. When you see a beautiful object, you become attached for a whole day. And not only whole day, it can last for a long, long, long time, always thinking about it, always want to possess it, only thinking how to possess it or how to get rid of it. So you have to shake your mind to understand that this is creating suffering for you so that you can practice meditation well. So this is called Tiao Lian Zui. It does not remove the defilements, but it shakes you so that you can tolerate the discomforts of meditation. Chi Kai Tung, Tian Pan Tung, because you have this Sui Shun Zui, so you can tolerate it. If you don't have this Sui Shun Zui, you can't tolerate it. Hmm? So these are the Sui Shun Zui. The cultivation of attention that gladdens the mind. Hmm? So we have talked about it. It is the same like that attention that uplift the mind. Hmm? When you see how much defilements you, you have and how long your mind stays in the state of fear, in the state of depression, in the state of worries, hmm? how harmful it is, then this depression is not useful for you. So you have to use some object to gladden your mind, hmm? to get out of it. So that you finally realize that our mind, worldly mind, is bound to the object. And this is bound by the seeds in our consciousness, nothing else. Or by our Sichi. So you have to keep in check your Sichi, your Jungs, uh, your seeds of uh, depression of fear by bringing the gladdening object to the mind. Mm -hmm. The cultivation of attention that gives rise to pliancy. Mm -hmm. Unless you have attained the pliancy, you will have no uh, much pleasure in your meditation. Hmm? That pleasure comes from the pliancy. So, uh, I teach you here the meditation on love. Hmm? This is the best way to bring pliancy into the mind. Hmm? It relaxes, or you bring the white color to the mind. Hmm? Love is connected with the white color. Hmm? The cultivation of attention that purifies the knowledge and seeing. So this is of course, the attention based on understanding the impermanence. All these objects, they are also impermanent objects. Nothing in our worldly experience is permanent. So, when you contemplate that we are the process, the other beings are also only the process, the world is only the process, that will, will be the cultivation of attention that purifies the process of knowledge and seeing. Hmm? 
in the process there cannot be a self if there is a self then there is not a process hmm? and meditation is also the process so you learn it but with understanding not with so grasping hmm? many people learn meditation so grasping because of that they get depressed when it is not what they imagine it to be and in other section of the nirnaya and we find the cultivation of attention to accomplish the path of shamatha and vipassana. Uh, so this is again complementary. Hmm? Samvega I have already mentioned to you. They translate Samvega as Yenli. Hmm? But the Yenli is not exactly the translation of Samvega. Samvega is something that really shakes you. Hmm? So all those who have attained some realization, it is because they had Samvega. They understood the suffering of Samsara. That is Samvega. This uh, samsaric mind is really a lot of suffering, but we don't see it precisely. If you study now mind only, we don't see it because we don't see mind only. When you see mind only, you see it very clearly that this mind only is our samsara. Prasada, gladdening the mind. Hmm? Uh, when you come to India, hmm? they give you prasad always, hmm? some piece of cookies or some sweet. Hmm? So it is to uh, gladden your mind through seeing the reality, which is for the Hindus, the heaven, the God. Hmm? So similarly, you have to gladden your mind by putting the object which can give you the fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Adinava, danger. This is very important. Kuo Huang. Adinava, when you see impermanence the suffering of impermanence the selflessness of impermanence then you will be able to see the danger otherwise you don't see the danger and when you see the danger you will be able to apply your mind to meditation if you don't see the danger, you won't apply your mind to meditation. You will apply it to everything else, but not to meditation. Then, in order to meditate, you have to have a clear object. So there has to be a light in your mind. Now, the real light is the light of wisdom. Hmm? That's why we always picture the wisdom by lamp, light. Hmm? Most of the universities in Xiangkang also no? <laughs> symbolized by light. Hmm? 
the university transfers is supposed to transfer the light of wisdom. I don't know if it does nowadays, but in the olden days it was like that. Hmm? Uh, but if you meditate and your mind has no light and you feel sleepy, you feel bored, then you pay attention to the light of sun, light of moon, light of lamp hmm? to bring some light at least from outside temporarily so that you uh, suppress your tendency to slumber, hmm? uh, to non-sensitivity. Because the non-clear object is the non-sensitivity of mind. The sensitive mind has, has light. But people are afraid of light. This is a problem. So they become oversensitive instead of using the light for wisdom and concentration. They use it for panic. Then Vastu Rupana, the Liao Pieshe, differentiating the real basis of perception. Hmm? What are the real basis of perception? There is no self hmm? because we bring the self into the perception, we are deluded. So what we experience is just the touch of the organs and the object. When there is touch of the organs and the object, we will learn today, then already we impose our past experience. That is Schweier. We are not even aware of it, but it comes very fast just like a flesh. And so our attention to the present object is already dominated by our past experience without our being aware of it. That's why I teach you the mental process to understand this very clearly. What you pay attention to is already determined by your past experience but we are not aware of it. What we are attached to is not our present Vedana, present show, but our link of the present show to our past show, to our past receiving of the object, which is stored in our mind. And the past receiving of the object is based on our Shilun. The seeds of our shilun is are deeply rooted in our mind and they control our attention, whether we are aware of it or not. Now you learn meditation to become aware of this process. And for that we have to have mindfulness and awareness and practice it in the everyday life. Otherwise we even don't notice how deeply we are rooted in our past experience. Unless you see it very clearly, you just act automatically. And acting automatically is precisely what the yoga chara tries to break. By bringing your attention to the mind, which is a base of all the objects. Hmm? Seven kinds of attention. This is very important to be mastered to accomplish the mundane and the super mundane. These seven kinds of attention, they explain the whole process of Shamatha and Vipassana and the whole process also of meeting Shamatha and Vipassana. You meet the Shamatha and Vipassana on the base of pliancy,
and samadhi, which will enable you to dwell in mind. First, you dwell in mind on the base of a differentiated object, but when you dwell in mind and have the habit of dwelling in the mind, then it is very easy to turn the differentiated object into the non-differentiated object. So, first there is attention to penetrate the characteristics. Hmm? So, uh, you need this attention, but it cannot remove the defilements. No way. So, we have already explained this Liao Xiang Zui in Shamata is to understand that the gross perception, gross feeling, gross mind, they come together, is suffering. The more subtle mind is more happiness. So, so through penetrating grossness, and the getting yen li from gr grossness, disgust from grossness, you go to the more and more subtle states of mind, which are more and more subtle states of sensation and perception. Because the sensation and perception are the citta sankara, shin shin. They determine how you experience the object. Hmm? They form the mind. So as long as your object is gross, your receiving the object sensation will be gross and the perception of the ob object will be gross. When you yen li get disgusted from this grossness, then you will study meditation. And when you study meditation, you will experience more and more subtle objects until you experience the most subtle object, which is beyond the object, and that is the object of liberation. Call it nirvana or call it uh, general suchness. So, you experience a more and more subtle object by getting disgusted, understanding the danger. That's why we have attention of danger. Adinawa. How did he translate Adinawa? Kuo Huang. Because you study the Kuo Huang of the Tzu, you get to the Yela Yeshi. The perception of through the five senses is gross compared with the perception of the mind. Perception of the mind in the Yi Jie Kamadhatu is gross compared to the perception of uh, the uh, first dhyana. Perception of the first dhyana is and feeling of the first dhyana is gross compared to the feeling of the second dhyana. Perception of the second dhyana is gross compared to third dhyana. Gross compared to fourth dhyana. Fourth dhyana perception is perfect, but as long as there is an object to be differentiated, still it is not as subtle as the perception with no object to be differentiated. So the perception of the endless space is more subtle. Perception of the endless consciousness is more subtle. Perception of the nothingness is more subtle. And the perception of neither of perception nor non-perception is the most subtle perception in the world. The, 
which is still which is in permanence now when you know these subtle perceptions then you can get intuition into the most subtle of all and that is the liberation it is perception beyond perception sensation beyond sensation mind beyond mind hmm? so please try hard <laughs> to get now already eight o'clock so let us do a little break otherwise some of you may be tired then let's uh, go through it i hope you will get some clarity on your meditation then you will understand better the mind process then we can go to vipassana and then we can see how peculiarities of the vipassana based on yoga chara and how it differs from the other vipassana we won't have time to discuss all systems of abhidharma but at least theravada which believes in the reality of the object the yoga chara speciality is not believing the reality of the object but it does not mean that it is not there it is very much there but in the relative truth the relative truth belongs to the dualistic consciousness okay
那我们继续。你开始修什么大的菩萨那样，把用那个疗相作意。Uh, sorry, I have to speak in English. <laughs> so you start by using this attention to penetrate the characteristic. If it is in shamata, I have explained it is the danger, inconvenience of the gross perception and the. the bliss of the more subtle perception. If you practice Vipassana in the disciple vehicle, then it is penetrate the 16 characteristics of the Four Noble Truths. So once you have penetrated the characteristics, then you use attention based on resolution. Why can you have a resolution? Because you have applied the wisdom from hearing, wisdom from, we have learned that, wisdom from hearing, wisdom from contemplation. You have penetrated the characteristics and you have attention continuity and attention to these characteristics. So your attention has, is, is ripening. So you can uh, use attention based on resolution. In the shamatha, it is the resolution of uh, uh, of keeping the mind inside the body. Rang Shin Nei Chuan. Only if you keep the mind in the body, then your mindfulness has ripened. Then you can use awareness to remove the defilements. Same in Vipassana. Only you use a differentiated object. If on the differentiated object, you can understand the four noble truths and stay resolutely with that attention. That means you can learn to use samadhi on this object because you have a resolution based on understanding. 
without understanding you won't have resolution mm. so your mind will always keep on wandering Uh, so, uh, next one, if you have a resolution based on understanding of the characteristics, in case of shamatha, the grossness of the gross perception and the subtleness of the more subtle perception, in uh, vipassana, the suffering of impermanence the selflessness of impermanence and the danger of the samsaric mind so if you work like this then you can uh, your attention you can use attention to isolate the mind from defilements. So here you are cutting off the defilements. And cutting off the defilements has a three stages. The cutting off of gross defilements, cutting off of middle defilements, and cutting off of subtle defined hmm? so in the, the nine shinju the cutting of gross defilements tiao fu zoi hmm? cutting of the middle defilements is when the mind gets a piece and cutting of the subtle defilements when the mind has attained one point in hmm? And here you have the cutting of the gross defilements is it, it, with the attention to isolate the mind from defilements. Pravi vekya, yuan li zoi. It cuts, it corresponds to the tiao fu zoi in the nine stages. It cuts off all the gross tendencies of mind to excitement and to thinking. So the next attention is investigation, investigating the mind. So when you cut off the gross defilements, you will get Qing An. When you get the Qing An, you will feel very, very delighted and happy. And unless you investigate your mind, you will identify with this state and be uh, uh, not continue to practice so you have to investigate the mind and see that it still has a tendency to excitement and to thinking uh, this tendency is still there but because you are negligent you don't see it very clearly. So mm. there is still a work to be done. Same in Shamatha, same in Vipassana. In uh, Vipassana, we will talk about it later. This is the process of uh, gathering the 37 causes of enlightenment. San Shi Chi Tie In this stage, you can use the uh, the woolly who huh? can ripe to woolly huh? so you can apply chi huh? so
So when you investigate the mind, you will find out there are still defilements. But you apply the Ratna Samgra, which is Shala, you investigate the mind and continue to practice so that you will be able to see even the subtle defilements. So that we have first the Shamayatis and Vyupa Shamayati. Vyupa Shamayati sees that even your mind is at peace, there is still uh, uh, either too much effort in application to the object or too little effort in application to the object. Xuanzang translate Yung Kung Pu Yung Kung. Hmm? This Yung Kung Pu Yung Kung is not the best translation, but it actually means effort, excessive effort in bending the mind to the object and deficient effort in bending the mind to the object. But the mind is already very, very peaceful. Hmm? The awareness is almost perfect. So you can be aware of the unequal application of mind. This is not yet a point, one pointedness because there are still lumps, very slight up and down. But because you have a perfect appeasement, view Pashamayati Chi Chi Chin, Zui Chi Chi Chin, in Shamata, so you can cut even the very subtle enlightenment and go even the subtle tendencies and then go to the final removal of the subtle defilements. So the first stage is Yuanli. Second stage is Shola. Yuanli removes the gross defilements. Shola removes the middle defilements. Still, there is a unequality in effort. And the uh, attention accomplishing the effort, is Wu Tian Tao. In Buddhism we speak of Wu Tian Tao, Anantara, Marga, which cuts the defilements, and then Tie Tuo Tao, which experiences the cutting of the defilements. So this is the case of Tia Xin Tiu Qin Zui, which is Wu Tian Tao. And uh, Tia Xin Tiu Qin Guo Zui, which is Tia Tuo Tao. Same in Shamata, same in Vipassana. But in Shamata, it is the Samadhi, in the Vipassana, it is uh, the Samadhi is already there, but it refers to the super mundane Samadhi, hmm? which can tuan or tuan fanal. We have already explained the cutting of the defilements has three stages hmm? mm -hmm. gross, okay. middle, subtle. At all, yes. The gross defilements are cut by PGR1. Huh? We have already explained the Chinting Taolung. That is, you put the opposite into the mind. Huh? You have uh, greed, so you put uh, the uh, non beautiful object and the greed will go away. You have anger, you put meta. Tse, Sí. Yes. the anger will go away. 
You have too many distracted thoughts. You pay attention to the breath and they will go away. But it is not yet samadhi, but the gross defilements will go away. That is Pijra Ertuan. Then you get the samadhi that is Jenfu Ertuan. You suppress the so, uh, the defilements dur during the duration of the samadhi. Then when you get uh, dhyana with a worldly object, mm -hmm. then no more defilements. But no more defilements as long as you are in the dhyana. When you go out of dhyana, defilements will come. But when mm. you get the dhyana on the super mundane object, kun, wuxiang, mm -hmm. wuyen, mm, then you can tuan or tuan defilements. Mm? Then you will burn the seeds of the defilements in the mind. If you mm. are a disciple, it happens in the ti kuo, ti er kuo, ti sang kuo, ti se kuo, bye bye samsara. Hmm? Samsara. Yo yu nye pan. Hmm? Nah. Yo yu nye pan. Hmm? You can, what is to be done as a disciple you have done, then you can rest and wait for the time to come. And you know there are no causes to bring you to the new birth. So you can stay in the permanence in uh, this yoga chara, this not in Theravada, not in other traditions, this permanence is explained as the nature of the mind. This is very important to understand. The non-dualistic nature of the mind. The mastery. So uh, when you study if you really want to get interested in meditation, you should study the Samahitati huh? of the uh, Yiche Shatilun. It explained 40 kinds of attention, Zoyi. So this one to six is called Ifen Zoyi. And Kyasin Chuchin Kuo Zoyi. Is Yi Tuan Zoi. That means Chi Fen Zoi. So the first six are preparation for the Chi Fen Zoi, for the Yi Tuan Zoi. That is Tie Tuo Tao. To get the Tie Tuo Tao, you need Wu Tian Tao, which Tuan Fan Nao. Which removes the highest, most subtle grade of defilements. Hmm? But to remove the most subtle grade of defilements, you have to remove the middle grade and the gross grade first. Hmm? And this happened in the mundane path and also in the super mundane path. The mastery of shamatha and vipassana are linked to three methods. Following the sign of the object, sui xiang, teng yin, ti, zui, application of wisdom from hearing, which investigate by differentiating the reflective image only. This is both in shamatha and vipassana. Only in shamatha it is on the wu, Wu Fen Pie Yin Xiang, 
in the Vipassana, it is on Yofeng and Pia Yin Shia. Hmm? This is a difference. Then which is the next one? Oh, I have put the verse of Dhammapada. Hmm? Uh, Yatha rahado gambiro vipassano anavyo evam dhamam sutvana vipassati pandito. Hmm? So uh, your mind by understanding the characteristics of the object, you have liao xiang zui. Your mind becomes clear. Then you can use Shenqi to investigate the object. And you can get a realization. In the Dhammapada, there is a very nice story connected with this verse. You want to hear the story? Hmm? Briefly. So that you can get some recreation at the same time learning Dharma. Hmm? There is a story about a Buddha giving a discourse to three laymen. Hmm? And Ananda, as usual, sitting next to him, remembering what he's teaching. Then while he is teaching, uh, one of the uh, three laymen, he is, uh, has a clear complexion, shining complexion. Hmm? And he enters a deep concentration. The other one is playing with the uh, with the branch of the tree, shaking always a branch of the tree. Hmm? Actually, they are one, two, three, four laymen. Hmm? The other one is while he's hearing the discourse, is using his fingers to dig into the earth, hmm? always like this. And the other one is uh, uh, like turning always his, uh, his hand. Hmm? So uh, the Ananda after they have left, the Ananda asks a question to the Buddha. Why, what is this reason? The one is so calm and uh, shining and so appeased. And the, so this is the word, uh, just like a deep lake with a crystal clear water, so clear becomes the mind of a wise man hearing the Dharma, hmm? understanding the characteristics of the Dharma. So he makes a resolution to penetrate the Dharma and he can realize. Now the other, so he says uh, one who was uh, shining, he has attained enlightenment. Probably it means the first stage of enlightenment, Sotapana. But maybe second, third, we were not there, I don't know. The other one who was playing with the branch while hearing the Dharma, he could not concentrate his mind. That's because he had the Sichi, hmm? this Vasana, this Bijas, in the, and the many, many previous lives he was a monkey hmm? Hmm. and he cannot. Uh, this is his habit, he cannot get over it. 
the other one who was digging the earth, he was a pig in his previous life. The Sichi is very heavy, so he cannot uh, in with the meaning of the Dharma. And the other one was Suinyu. Uh, Chuinyu, huh? Earth, Chuin, the uh, earthworm. The other one was the earthworm, Chuin. So he is always shifting, 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 shifting. So his Sichi is so strong, he can with the Dharma Shyamin. So first, we have to understand this Sui Xiang Teng Yin Ti Zoi. Then we can investigate it by wisdom connected with applied thought. Applied thought is more gross. But it can it has a power of wisdom, but it cannot penetrate the reflected image fully. Hmm? Neither the shamatha image nor the vipassana image. So then it comes investigation, it's thoroughly by sustained thought. That is application of wisdom from meditation, which can well penetrate the reflected image and such bits as witness liberation. Liberation in worldly sense, the dhyana, and the liberation in the Super mundane sense also, the super mundane dhyana. In order to understand better the practice of shamatha meditation and the practice of vipassana, which is based on it, one should try to get some un understanding of the mental process as taught in the yoga chart. Without, actually the shamatha is a mental process, the vipassana is a mental process. What we experience in daily life in terms of differentiating the object is only mental process. Hmm? Now the peculiarity of the yoga chara is that this mental process happens all in mind. It does not need an outer object. In other tradition, we will explain briefly, maybe Theravada, we have no time. But Theravada, Sarvastivada, all uh, take the outer object as something real. Hmm? Yet, they clearly explain also that the outer object is inseparable from the mind. It cannot exist without the mind. This is very important to understand, to understand Buddhism. The table and the hardness of the table and the sensation of the hardness of the table, they are one process, not a two processes. Now, because our dualistic delusion, we understand the hardness of the table be different from the sensation of the hardness of the table. So we are deluded and we think the object is something which is separate from our mind. But object can never happen separate from the mind. There is no such a case of an object separate from the mind. Whenever there is hardness, there is a sensation of hardness. When there is a, ever there is a softness, there is a sensation of the softness. And what is hard for my hand is not hard for the teeth of the crocodile. It's very soft. So it's all very relative teeth of the crocodiles, they can go uh, through the iron, <laughs> no problem.
there is a very famous story of Millerepa. I'm telling too many stories tonight. <laughs> you want to hear? Millerepa was meditating, not like us, very diligent. Hmm? We tend to be still lazy. Hmm? Milrepa was the most diligent yogi maybe of our epoch. Hmm? So he could attain realization in one life. Hmm? And uh, once he came, he had to come for some supply into a village hmm? from the mountains where he dwelt. When he came to the village, in the monastery, there was a scholar, hmm? like uh, I am now explaining the Abhidharma, hmm? to make uh, the people understand the greatness of Buddhism hmm? and the correct view. Abhidharma is to understand the correct view in detail. Hmm? Now, he was explaining the elements. I will maybe teach you a little bit from the elements to understand Yogacara. Hmm? Elements are also the seeds in our consciousness. Hmm? Now, uh, he was explaining the hardness like this, hmm? the softness and so on. The hardness is the earth. Hmm? The cohesion is the water, the heat is the fire. Now the old Milrepa was passing by and he was saying, no, it's not, it's not like that. So he sees this old vagabond having a, just the rack, the racks on him. And, he said, you shut up. What do you have to say? Very proud scholar. So he said, he continues speaking. He, Milarepa says, no, no, no. And hardness is like this. You stupid idiot. And he put his hand on the rock. He was standing next to the rock. Uh, is this not hardness? Milarepa says, no. And he put his hand through the... <laughs> it's our mind. Okay, so we are not on that stage, but you can manifest the mind if you become a Milarepa. Okay. In the Yogacara understanding, the mental consciousness can arise simultaneously with one or many sensual consciousnesses together because it is based in manas and on the alaya consciousness through it. So the uh, place of the alaya is the whole of the word chisha, that is its truth. So everything we experience is alaya. So, and it is also what we experience now. We experience the sound and we experience the hardness of the body or pain in the knee if you say, stay long. But according to Theravada, Actually, you cannot experience two objects at the same time. Because the speed of the mind is so fast, so you don't see it. But when you experience the other object, the mind will go through that object. But it happens so fast. So like you have a film. The film, you have the impression that it is a uh, one movement, but it is all broken, 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 uh, 
thousands of times mm -hmm. in one minute hmm? because these images are flashes, right? Similarly, is our consciousness. It can have only one in the time. Hmm? And it goes through that image in a very fast process. According to Theravada, in a one snap of the fingers, you have already thousands and hundreds of thousands of mental processes. So fast is the mind. Hmm? That's why if you have supernatural powers, you can see what your uncle in Australia is doing now. Hmm? Hmm? No problem. Or you can remember some person you have seen in maybe in Europe some 20 years ago. Hmm? How is it possible? <laughs> So you can have only one image in mind at the moment. Hmm? Now, the importance of meditation is that in meditation you can keep that image. So by keeping that image, the mind will slow down. And because it slows down, you can investigate it on that image. Hmm? But if the mind does not slow down, you cannot investigate it on the image. Mm -hmm. So you have the impression that uh, it is connected with the same image. But when you hear sound, the image is from the sound. When you pay attention to the, when your mind is connected with the body, it only experiences the image of the body. Mm -hmm. So this is the Theravada explanation. It all makes sense according to the attention you use. If you use attention according to Yogacara, you will experience according to Yogacara. If you use attention according to Theravada, you will experience the mental process according to Theravada. Now you are learning to experience the mental process according to yoga chan. Hmm? Since the immediately preceding condition, Teng Wu Tian Yuan gives rise to many different mental factors. Hmm? It can, according to Yogacara, also give rise to many different minds, like many waves arise in one ocean, which is Alaya. Hmm? I have taught you the Buddha has compared our ears to the ocean, our eyes to the ocean, our body consciousness to the ocean, but actually there is only one ocean, and it is Alaya. When you can tolerate the waves in this ocean, one ocean, you can go beyond the mind. Hmm? So the six consciousness is perceived. So the six consciousness perceives objects of the five consciousnesses and can arise together with them. Hmm? So you can have sensation in the knees and at the same time you can differentiate what I'm teaching you. Because the alaya is the place where everything takes place, there is no other place than this ally. Hmm? Chu. And this our chu is based on our jirsho. And our jirsho is our faculties and what the faculties experience. Hmm? 
This is very important to understand. So our mind dwells because it has judicial because it has judicial so we are in samsara now in case of the buddha the mind does not dwell in the five aggregates it is still connected with them but dwelling means to chi grasp mm -hmm. We are grasping at the five aggregates. The Buddha does not grasp in the five aggregates. And the cause of our grasping to the five aggregates is actually the, our concepts, which are based on our feelings. Through feelings, we, through attachment to feelings, we create karma. And because we have different karma, we cling to different concepts. So this uh, woman is desirable for me. If it's not desirable for you, maybe hmm? this uh, uh, car is desirable for you you is not desirable for me and so on this is our world mm -hmm. all this is clinging to the concept and these concepts we cling to them because we have war And we have war because we have desire. If we don't have desire, we don't need any war. So the six consciousness perceives object of the five consciousnesses that can arise together with them Otherwise, no object can be seized clearly. Hmm? To seize clearly the object, you need the six consciousness. Hmm? And six consciousness has to dwell on the object in order to seize it clearly. Hmm? So the whole process of meditation is based on the six consciousness. But the six consciousness cannot function without the manas and without the Fifth consciousness is. And all that is based in Alaya. It is because it is with seizing the differentiation Savikalpa, Yofenpia, while the five consciousnesses are without seizing the differentiation. When you see the object through the eye, at first you don't seize it. Only when the mental consciousness comes in, you will seize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. This is very clear to. It should be very, very clear hmm? mm -hmm. in your own experience. When you see something and you don't uh, apply will to it, hmm? you don't apply attention to it, then uh, you, the object will be there but you will not grasp it. Mm -hmm. But when you pay attention to it, it is already connected with the uh, 
and past. Hmm? Then the mental process appears because the mental process starts with the attention and attention is already connected with the past. Hmm. This is very important to understand. What is the function of attention? To move the mind? Hmm? Because the mind is moved, it goes to the object. Hmm? Mm -hmm. When it goes to the object, it can differentiate. So according to Theravada, the characteristic of attention is sarana, the going to the object. Same in uh, yoga chara, tungshin, zuoyi wei tungshin, yin wei shin tung soi ta yin shin wan soyen. Hmm? And when it yin shin wan soyen, what is its yeah, what is its function? According to Theravada, it coordinates the other mental factors. What is the uh, mental factor which coordinates all the mental factors? Chetana, the will. So when there is attention, there is already will. So the function of attention is, its uh, characteristic is to arise the mind, to bring it to the object. The, its function is to bring the mental factors which do the job together. Hmm? What brings the object, what brings the mind to the object? The will and vitarka, shin. Like two oars of the boat, they draw the mind to the object. Hmm? Well, and what? This is a process here of investigating the object and deciding about the object. When it, when you have just shui er shu, now you don't need any shin. But attention is already there and will will be also there. Where there is attention, there is will. Hmm? They cannot be separated. Both bring the mental object, the mind together. That's why it can differentiate the mental the, the object. If the, mind, if the mental factors are not brought together, they cannot differentiate the mental object. And who does the job? The attention and the will and the shin. Hmm? Shin shu. Shin is what creates the speech, creates the names. Hmm? So Xiang is already there. And the Xiang also gives the names to the object. Hmm? So we can feel it clearly. Why we can feel it clearly? Because attention and uh, will bring the mental factors together. If they are not brought together, we cannot feel the object clearly. And when we feel the object clearly, already comes liking and disliking. Mm. That is our individual work based on our alaya. Mm? Your liking is not my liking. Your disliking is not my mm -hmm. dislike. Mm -hmm. We all live in our little world mm -hmm. based on our seats. 
So I pay attention to something else, you pay attention to something else, he pays attention to something else, hmm? according to his uh, CG. Mm -hmm. hmm? mm -hmm. And when there is attention, the mind comes together. Mm -hmm. Because there is also will, which brings the mental factors together. And because there will arise shin, which drags the mind to the object. So you shin can distinguish it clearly. Without shin, you cannot go into shamatha, you cannot go into vipassana, nothing. But once you get a deep, deeper concentration, then the shin is a rough force. Then the mind will drop it. And what remains is only subtle force. The sir. Hmm? The model, perception, model of perception in Yogacara I have now described, so now today's lesson is then analyzing this. Hmm? So let us start with today's lesson. We will finish on Sunday. Hmm? And if we have time on Sunday, I will start comparing it with uh, the system, living system of meditation which is based on the idea of object being real. Hmm? Same like uh, Sarvastivada, Yichie Yopu. But the explanation is quite different because using different Zoe, due to Zoe, we, due to attention, we bring the mental factors together. When we bring the mental factors together, we experience the object in a certain way. We experience the object in a way how we bring the mental factors together. So when there is attention, there is already the will. And when there is a will, It is because there is a clear xiang and clear show. They determine then how we bring the mental factors together. Bringing the mental factors together is the job of joy and su. How we bring the mental factors together is the job of xiang and show. Please try to see it clearly in your meditation. As we have seen, an active mind with its mental factors in uh, yoga chara, born of the alaya consciousness, Uh, as we have seen, an active mind with its mental factors is in Yogacara born of the Alaya consciousness because the seven active consciousnesses use its Nimita Bhaga, hmm? Shyangfen. That means its uh, objective aspect, its uh, aspect of being seen as opposed to the aspect of seer, Tian Fen, hmm? which is activated by the Yesh, hmm? by the Zi Cheng Fen. <laughs> to be able to function. Thus the experience of samsara, the experience of a mind with and in and outflow of impurity, samsara is nothing but a mind connected with 
in and out flow of impurities, which is called sashrava, your low sin, hmm? tan chen zhi. Because we have tan chen zhi, we have war. If we don't have tan chen zhi, we don't need any war. Hmm? Mm. Or we have need for war. Huh? This is what Buddha has discovered. In Buddhist philosophy, the realization until Buddha was a realization of war. Hmm? The Buddha has taught the realization of war as Wu War. Mm. And he has taught the war. war we need war because we have tan chen zhi. Mm -hmm. If we don't have tan chen zhi, we don't need any war concept. Mm. <laughs> this is Buddhism. One has to see it very clearly. Mm. It's in Yogacara explained as the transformation of mind. Mm. So the mind, the real mind, which we do not see clearly, but which we can see clearly when we study and practice, is the non-dualistic mind. But our experience is the experience of Shi Wang Fenti, the dualistic mind, as something outside opposed to inside, and something inside as opposed to outside. Hmm? But it is not the true nature of the mind, zhishin of the mind. It comes from the bijas. Hmm? And these bijas, they are the shin pian. Hmm? This transformation is of two kinds, based on cause and conditions. Directly from the seeds in Alaya, without a direct intermediary of the sevens and eights consciousness. Hmm? That is the first, the direct object. The I did not put here one. Huh? You don't have one there, no? What do you have? So in the Yogacha is a, a transformation of, of mind. This transformation of mind is of two kinds. Uh, is, there is one. Huh? First, based on causes and conditions directly from the seeds in Alaya. Without a direct intermediary of the sevens and six consciousness. So what we reflect when we in flesh, when our eye faculty is connected with the color, hmm? so there is like flesh of this color is reflected in the sensitivity of our eye. Hmm? which is called Qingse, it is a technical term in Buddhism. This reflection is like a flash. Then the mind, six consciousness, works on this reflection. But when this reflection appears, with attention, we already bring the past experience. Because it is connected with the seeds. This is very important to understand. The I consciousness is vipaka, is ishu. You should understand that. Ishu means transformation from the past. I consciousness is ishu. The hearing consciousness is ishu, is vipaka. Resultant consciousness. It is a result of what? Result of our karma. 
Hmm? Because in the past life we have the desire for seeing, so we have eyes in this life. Hmm? Very simple. So when this uh, contact, immediate contact of the eye sensitivity with the object appears, so it is reflected in the sensitivity, it is mm -hmm. like a flash. Mm -hmm. hmm? And it is directly then connected with the alaya consciousness, with the xiang fen of the alaya consciousness. This Xiangfen of the Alaya consciousness is, is the result of the Ye consciousness. Ye Shi Zicheng Fen Self witnessing consciousness. So Alaya is the Ishu Wang. It is the king of the resultant consciousness. The eye, ear, nose, tongue, body is the servant of the king. Mm. The mind. Yeah. This should be very clear. Mm. Yeah, so you have uh, other consciousnesses based on Vikalpa. Vikalpa means sui fen pie pien. The other consciousnesses except the eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, bodily consciousness, hmm? and the tongue consciousness, tongue. Mm -hmm. and the alaya consciousness, of course, because mm -hmm. these consciousnesses, they reflect the xiang fen of the alaya. Hmm? The other consciousness goes through the filter of the manas. Hmm? So they are sui fen pie pien. Eight kinds of vikalpas in Yogacara based on the three basic vikalpas in the Abhidharma Kosha. So what we experience already are the vikalpas. Hmm? The Sui Fen Pia, these three basic Vikalpas you will find in Chi Shirun, Zushin Fen Pia, Chi Tu Fen Pia, Yin Yen Fen Pia. The idea of self nature based on Vitarka because we investigate the object is something lasting. We have the idea of self-nature. Deduction. Hmm? Anumana. We conclude it must be like this because we deduce it. Hmm? And from memory. In uh, Yoga Chara, we have eight Vikalpas. Zushin Fen Pie, Kao Zushin, Kao Zushin, Suoyo Ta Cha Pie. Then the reality of a compounded object as something which uh, really exists separate from the parts. Hmm? Like a car does not exist separate from the parts, the forest does not exist separate from the trees, the body does not exist separate from the parts. We believe it to be self existent separate from the parts. That is Vikalpa. Then, Wo, Wo, Suo. And according to Wo, Wo, Suo, we then differentiate. K 
可以的手，不可以的手，嗯，不可以，不不可以的手，嗯。So three vikalpas, three fanpia in yoga chara develop into eight fanpia, but it is the same thing more or less. Because we believe in the self-existence of person and things, so we have the shin pampias and we deduce that it is like this or it is like that. She is uh, really beautiful and will be always beautiful. And she's uh, always desirable, will never be not desirable. And this is all from the connected with the memory. So I won't give you too many informations. They may uh, cause indigestion, mental indigestion. We will continue next lesson. And if we have time, I will add to this so that you see how mental process can be different if you put object into mind in a different way. Hmm? Sarvastivada makes object in the mind in a different way, Theravada in a different way, Yogacara in a different way. So the whole system depends on how you make the object in the mind. Hmm? And we are deluded about the objects because we apply self-existence. Hmm? This is our deep habit which the Yogacara tries to destroy by making it clear to you that the reality of dualism comes from the mind itself, not from the world. Hmm? The mind itself catches itself in its own spider's net. Hmm? Like a cocoon of the silkworm, we are in the mess of our our threads, hmm? which is our shilun. Hmm? Okay, so that will do for today. Let us transfer merit for the benefit of all sentient beings. May all sentient beings be free from obnoxious grasping. Hmm? Due to which we all suffer. Yuan Zi Kung Te Pu Ji Yi Qian Wo Teng Yi Zhong San Jie Kung Chen Fu Tan. Thank you. See you on Sunday. Bye bye. Liang Xian Xian, Ni Hao Ma. Singing, Kai Singing. The singing is Kai Na. Please prepare some good questions so that we can get uh, further. I see some of you may have good base in, in Buddhism. Some of you, it seems, have not yet this base. Yogacara is a little difficult, so please try to clarify these concepts and do a little bit of reading. I advise you at least to read a little bit Chishalun. Hmm? to get some basic Buddhist concepts. Omitopo. Omitopo. See you on Sunday. See you on Sunday. Bye-bye.